Hey everyone, Paul Riappel here. Welcome to episode 7. This is a good one. I've got David Plen as my co-host. Yep. And our very special guest today, my dad's best friend, songwriting partner, the one and only Stuart Margolin. You're in for a treat. Welcome back to the Riappel Room. Everybody. Welcome back to the Riappel Room. This is a special one. This is a special one. Not only do I have a co-host today, and he's not doing this because he likes to chat with me and hang out with me. He's doing this because of our special guest. Dave, are you there? I am, and I do like to hang out with you and chat with you, though. Don't say that. Don't you say that, mister. But, I, no, but, but seriously, special guest today. You know, if you've owned a TV set in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and beyond, and if you love Jerry Riopelle songs, which I know you do, he's co-written many, many of your favorites. He was the sole writer on a few of your favorites as well. And here he is. Stuart Margolin is here in the Riopelle room. Hey, Stuart. Hello, everybody. Hey, man. And I like hanging out with you guys, too. Oh, well. There we go. Okay. (laughs) So, Dave. Yes. You happy to be here? (laughs) I'm I'm really happy to be. Okay. I, this is I told you I said that we we need to bring Stuart in on this, and I yes. want to be part of it. Yes. So well, I appreciate so you good. including me. Right, of course. So Stuart, what I like to do yeah. to start out is we're gonna all hang tight real quick, and we're all just gonna go back. We're going back in time. So here, okay. we, here we go. Hold on. One of my faves. <laughs> ah, I still like that. <laughs> That's the only reason I do this, you know, just to, for the sound effect. Yes. Stuart. Yeah. T- first of all, I want to let's start at the very beginning. M- music and acting obviously is your life. What was first and what 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 did you kind of grab onto first? Well, I'm I mean, I always loved music and actually I think they were together. I my uncle, I had an uncle and he gave my parents, I guess, a, a bunch of uh records and i knew i would forget the artist's name as soon as i asked but yeah uh louis jordan uh-huh. oh, yeah. was his name and he was from the 40s and the 50s i guess too uh great great bands and rhythm tracks and i would dance around i'm talking really young yeah yeah uh, to his to those records and that i can remember and i'm so glad i remembered his name so there was a combination of dancing to his records mm-hmm. and liking the music. And so uh, when I got a little older, I didn't really want to study dance because <laughs> I was a uh, chicken shit. <laughs> because in those days, and maybe it's still true, uh, if you were a young guy and you you take dance lessons, right. uh, yeah, exactly. You know, so although I was a tap dancer when I was six, by the way. Well, that's what I wanted to be—a <laughs> tap dancer. Man, oh man! Uh, but uh, it was not in the cards. Right. So uh, where, the next where were you best living? thing was acting, Dallas in Texas. Okay. okay. So that you know, then acting and kind of just showing off. Well, so, what was your first musical instrument, though? I mean, was it, I know you played accordion early on, but did you play? No, no, no. I mean, that's later. There was. Later, I did yeah. take piano, and I remember going to a recital, and you know, I don't remember anybody laughing, so I couldn't have been terrible. But uh, it didn't, it didn't stick, unfortunately. So it really wasn't any instrument. And then I kind of loved. Uh, zydeco music and uh uh and so i got an accordion uh, and it taught me one thing which was uh the right hand was the keyboard but the left hand were probably i'm gonna say maybe 50 buttons Mm -hmm. little buttons and each one was a different chord Uh or a fifth or you know Uh, and so i remember i would 
push a button and play on the thing and change buttons. And Jerry used to say, and Murray, is say, where'd you come up with that chord? <laughs> <laughs> My left hand. That's cool. Yeah, the left hand. I found the button. It's yeah. three down from the top. You know? <laughs> How did you meet Jerry? How did that happen? Where was that? What um, time was that? And where was that? Uh, I had written a one act play and there was a, there were two actors in the play. I mean, a, a guy and a woman and, uh, the guy was played by Smokey Roberts. Okay. And Smokey said, Hey, I'm writing songs with the guy you went to high school with Murray McLeod. And I could, you know, Murray and I were friends in high school. So I said, Oh my God, I didn't even know he was in LA. So, uh, I went and over that was to in their Arizona. offices. Yeah, we should say you lived in Arizona for a little bit back. In yeah, high I, days. I okay. graduated high school at Scottsdale. Okay, uh, which the school isn't even there anymore. I don't think. I'm sure it didn't. Uh, but then I was hanging around. They had an office, which was cool to, at that time. This is about '65, mm -hmm. early '65, maybe '64 even. And uh, and then one day, I think it was Murray, but I don't know which one, said, hey, we've got a, a guy coming in that's recorded a lot and produced some. And it was Jerry Riopel. Mm -hmm. And we all met and hung around. And then Jerry and I really hit it off. And yeah. we became really good friends. And we were all writing at first. They were the group, the parade. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would just hang around and uh, come up with some lyrics every now and then. Right. And then eventually, after a few years, uh, would you know write, try a full song. And it was on the accordion, the little I knew. And believe me, uh -huh. I mean, if you'd say, can you play something? I could play Pop Goes the Weasel. <laughs> that was about <laughs> it. <laughs> but I could make up songs without knowing what I played. Yeah. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. I do. So anyway, Absolutely. and that was how uh, uh, Blues on My Table was written. And I want to get more into that, but I want to back up just a little bit because this is a perfect segue when you're talking about the parade and meeting Jerry and writing, writing with him. I've got something to, that we can all listen to that will we'll take you right back to that time. And uh, yeah. we can talk about it afterwards. Let's listen real quick. Here we go. Be on my grasshopper, jumping on down the road. Got some nothing on my mind, much nowhere to go but to do the thing. Start to be a hit. She looks so good to me Was somewhat of a sensation I tuned in on her Don't you know she tuned in on me Chased it, fell in the willow tree Don't you know we laughed cause we were wasted I tuned in on her Don't you know she tuned in on me S-E-D-C I saw I saw Goodbye, shop right at the stoplight. 
saw me a new fox waving high. I tuned in on her. Don't you know you tuned in on me? That's it, DC. I saw my DC. Wow, huh? Yeah. That's, that gr- that's that a, got a great right? groove. Oh, my goodness. I loved that when I was a little kid, that song. I don't know. Yeah. You know where that Asamasa Nisi comes from? I do, but I'll let you tell it. <laughs> well, no, it's uh, the actual three words together uh, comes from eight, the movie Eight and a Half, the Fellini movie. And it refers to there's a magician doing some magic or he's kind of guessing what people are thinking. And uh, Marcello Mastriani, who played the lead, asked him, what, what do you mean? Asa Nisi Masa, but for our purposes, we used it the other. Of course. Uh, and it's it's like a mysterious, magical thing that no one can explain, basically. Uh, but it really is Asa Nisi Masa. That's funny. So that was The Parade. That was 1967. And that actually was released as a single early 68. Um, that was uh, yeah I after i mean sunshine girl had some success and i think they tried to put out some other ones and that was one of them um huh. i don't know what, what happened right. with it but that's what it did. they did put it in yeah there. right i didn't even know that b-side was a uh, oh smoky song uh she sleeps alone oh yeah yeah, uh, yeah. um so what do you think that was one of the first songs you guys wrote together mm. It's probably close. Yeah. I, I'm trying to. It seems like we'd read something else together. Well, there's something else on that that from that same period called a uh, laughing lady. Or is it laughing lady? Yeah, yeah. laughing yeah. lady, yeah. and uh, she's got the magic. Right, right. I know the yeah, great one. Those are great songs. It. I don't think it was the first one, but it would have certainly been among the first. Yeah, ones. among the first for sure. And I met Dave through Jerry. Yes. Uh, and and Dave's, uh, all of the band he was with, and with and all those guys were out of Pasadena. Mm-hmm. Uh, and is at that same time, Murray was uh, rooming with Jimmy Messina. Uh, they had a little place in Laurel Canyon. And it seems to me, tell me if I'm wrong, Dave, did you guys no Kenny Loggins or yeah is yeah, that how we, Jimmy met Kenny Loggins no no I don't know actually know how that happened he was we had a band Thumper and he Kenny yeah. came to one of our practices and wanted us to do one of his songs and brought us a real to real tape of this song called Omnibus Gem <laughs> and it was oh. it kind of a, a like a broken arrow by the Buffalo Springfield the song just kind of meandered and kept changing, but I remember the song still. Huh. I don't know. For some reason, I always associate knowing Kenny, obviously through Jimmy, but through you guys somehow. I don't know why that. Yeah, he maybe was from Pasadena. I don't know. Definitely a Pasadena guy. He was in a yeah. group that played the Ice House all the time. Huh. Yeah, he was definitely a Pasadena Alhambra guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and actually, you and Jerry wrote a lot of the Thumper B sides. We had Chuchula. Chuchula. Yeah. Chuchula. Yeah. Now, that may have been one of the first ones we ever wrote. Is that possible? I don't know. It's No, no. Th- this came after the parade. Yeah. Ch- Chuchula was the one we went to Leon Russell's place and he put the piano solo. Oh, on yeah. 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 And Leon was partnered with a guy named Mark Benno. Uh, yeah. Mark yeah, Benno. Yeah. yeah. Mark Benno. And I know that they were looking for a name for their group. And there's a group that Murray and I and Jerry and Smokey had kind of, we didn't put them together, but we kind of, we promoted them. They did a show 
uh, called the Groove Core. It was at a theater on yeah. uh, La Cienega. Uh, yeah. It was a legit theater, actually, is what it was. And we did a musical venue, and there was a group, my friend, Little David. I don't even remember the name of the group. Well, the, the group name was Asylum Choir. That's Thie- right. Oh, that's and, right. And then Jerry was a co-writer on a song called Thieves in the Choir. Yeah. Right. Then we gave... Record. Then we mentioned that name because my friend David's boot group had broken up and even got out of the business, and that's when uh, Leon took that name, Asylum Choir. Mm. Ah, that was the name of their group. Ah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, that is going back. Yeah, <laughs> I told you. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, okay, you started to mention we we talked a little bit or started to get into uh, blues on my table and the accordion. Oh. Yeah, there was just, uh, uh, that's, I recall, I I went up to Canada, I had this little, at the time, a little house uh, that I bought, uh, this farm, and, and I'd go up and for Christmas or maybe for, in the summer, and I remember sitting around with nothing else to do, and I started writing that song, but that was, and it was one chord, as I recall. Two, uh, two, two chords. Two yes. chords, I mean. And that's because I didn't know any more buttons to put. <laughs> <laughs> but I, re- I remember hearing that. Da, 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 da. You played oh, that yeah. on the on the accordion. And I thought, that I've never, no one has ever come up with that line before right. or, or since now. But I, it was such a fresh sounding line. And you, that was the part of the melody of the. What, what song and what what Jerry? I seem to remember Jerry telling me way back was that so Stuart, you had you had the accordion playing those that chord into the second chord, and, and then you had that you know whatever the line is, uh, right. and he said, "Wait, wait, what are you doing? What is that melody you're singing?" And so he picked he he had you sing it again, and he kind of fa- tried to find it on the piano. That's the that was one of the stories I've heard. Dave, yeah, Dave, maybe you've heard. <laughs> the, well, the it, I don't know. I, no, I remember him playing it on the on the da, 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 yeah. da, da, because I, it, okay. it's not something you'd sing. It is like a blues thing. I mean, I was so influenced. It, I was so influenced by blues mm-hmm. that I don't think I'd know how to write. Very uh, anything that didn't have some link to it. Masterpiece of that song is that it, it, it the evolution of what how that song became such a incredible piece. Oh yeah, the arrangement that was finally done was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, it was, and the singing. Yeah. yeah, it was quite great. And since we're talking about it, let's take a listen. Here we go. It's Blues on My Table, written by <laughs> Stuart Margolin.
Gonna rain in my eyes this morning Got the blues on my table I got the blues on my bed Well, the girl didn't love me Alright But she just didn't get tired of that uh dave dave just wailed on that oh my god that was unbelievable uh, unbelievable that is probably that might be my favorite jerry reappel song written by Stuart. yeah it's it's there it's It's, in the top three i mean it's just the whole i mean Stuart, when you first heard the finished the finished product did you go? My God, my my accord, my little accordion song turned into this. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much like that. I mean, uh, I remember Jerry sang it because uh, he can he exercises kind of a melodic restraint mm-hmm. and saves it for when it becomes important. That's so cool the way he does it. Yeah, yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, uh, and Dave's guitar work. You well, know, Dave's brilliant. Coming in that, that right? man in the room. Anyway, the, well, the whole yeah. the whole the way the whole thing builds and the little the instrumentation, the little parts that kind of come up and the, the way the drums change and of course John Harris is it really is Dave. Right. I, I mean, I go over with you this all the time, Dave, and how yeah. how amazing that track is. To no, me. I, yeah. I, I it's still a listen to it. And I'm like astounded. I mean, was, yeah. this time I was really listening to John's bass and thinking. You know what a great ba- bass yeah. player and what a great bass player yeah. that was. Nobody would have played the song. Quite Freddie like was that. incredible on it. His parts yeah. were great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody was on. It's funny how that happens. Yeah. Like you, well, they rehearsed wanna... on it for <laughs> how long, Dave? How did you? No, oh, Jesus. That we spent entire. <laughs> summer in yeah. that garage with the garage door open just going over <laughs> really i don't know how the neighbors didn't just yeah. like burn the place down those people you know just must have like snake it stop yeah. after the three weeks <laughs> yeah i can remember everything i remember Playing da 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 and jerry saying what, what this time why don't you go down da 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 da. He wanted ah, me to change it. Yeah, that that yeah. was his suggestion. Uh-huh. And then da yeah. and then go back. So I, I can re- remember so much about that record. So Dave, anything you want you got on your mind? Well, you know, I was thinking about you mentioned your place on Salt Spring Island, and if, yeah, you know, I was thinking people, of you too, and Jerry at that summer theater. That was just the best time ever, and that. And for those Riapel fans, to see Salt Spring Slim on yeah. the, the uh, that's where the Salt Spring comes from. And I, that ferry ride into those Vancouver Islands, you know, and going hitting that island was just like I'll never forget that either. And it was so great. And Stuart, you always you know, with a couple of years in a row, you did a play for the you know Islanders yeah. there. And they were yeah. like very hip plays. Soroyan was one, and then you bring in yeah. actors, Margot Kidder, and what you know, legit actors up there. And they yeah, put and on George this, Firth. George Firth, yeah. Who ended up writing a company? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And a bunch of a few others too. Yeah. And I always remember the uh, the ride with you in the Citroen with you, oh. me, <laughs> and Bobby, and the cat named Reach. Oh Do you remember God. that? And we, and yeah, we would, I forgot the cat. 
Yeah, you had the cat, and we would you would take, and then we were towing a trailer. You had the Citroen in the trailer, and us in the car, and you'd go, you know, seventy five. You'd get pulled over. This happened three times. Pulled over by <laughs> highway patrol. Pulled over. They they wrote on the window. It goes, hey man. Rockford Files, fantastic. Okay, <laughs> just you know, just keep it down to fifty-five. You know, you'll be cool. You know, just get and Stuart wave. Thank you very much. And then, like a half an hour later, we're doing seventy-five again, <laughs> <laughs> all the way up to Vancouver. Do you funny. know what we were carrying? On that? maybe we had luggage, but mainly we were carrying lights ah, for the theater. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah, was, was this that play like around seventy-four? Is this what you guys are talking about? Before 73, 74 could have been. Thought it was way before 70. I don't think so. You know why? Because I remember Jerry and I sitting on a couch and you coming in from being outside and, and came in and just like, go, listen to this, guys, listen to this. And you sang Red Ball Texas Flyer a cappella. So it was around that time. I remember that happened on that one of those island trips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and we were, I remember Jerry and I were that. Just like, what the hell was that? You know, <laughs> sing that again. Did I leave you guys? Did I leave the island and come back? Because I remember writing that in the car. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't remember that. I just remember you coming. Yes, yeah, you came back from something. Yeah, you were gone yeah. for a day or whatever. Not. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And then uh, here's a good segue. One of the people I remember that I was stage managing with Margot's sister, Annie Kidder. Yeah, and and we were you know trying to do the you know, cues and stuff and you know doing what we could. I was making posters f to put around the island ad advertising the play. And Naomi was in it, I think, too, in the play. But anyway, so Annie Kidder was a good friend of yours. Yeah, yeah, and, and then I know where you're going yeah. with that, Dave. I think. Okay, take it. So, <laughs> so Stuart Valentine from the this no. this album, Take a Chance, has some great co-writes with you and jerry and one of them since we're talking about th this song was about ann kidder right 
both Jerry and I wrote it, and we were both kind of a little bit in love with Annie, but uh, okay. in a nice way. I mean, it wasn't, there were no scenes or anything. Or okay. No. <laughs> Everybody was. Well, well, since we're, we're talking about that, let's listen to it. It is a beautiful song. Sure. So let's, uh, let's listen to Valentine. I've known some younger girls, some women of the world. Oh, I still love them. The dreams that she's repaired, these many years she's cared. Still love Valentine, oh sweet friend of mine, you changed my love, you changed me time. Valentine, oh Valentine, I'm feeling good. Gorgeous. Yeah. Jerry's vocal brings tears to my eyes in that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What phrasing. Yeah. That second one. That's a fan favorite. Oof. Yeah. Oof. Is it really? Yeah, they lo- oh, we always get requests for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there actually while while we're on that album, there's a song that you actually are the sole writer on. I think it's the song that opens the album. Dave, do you, do you got anything more about this? You know what song I'm oh, talking well, about. Oh, well, yeah, I do know. And this this is this is one that you name check a bunch of people, yeah, without actually naming them other than Holly, and uh, and I know that some of them are real people, and the people I was having a conversation with one of your fans, and he wanted to know, well, who who is this guy and who is this guy, and it's a uh, uh, river on the run, and you oh. name check Jerry, you tell I, one guy's a rock and roller, he's a real good friend of mine, I know that. Oh one. oh oh yeah. Let's let's listen to it. This what this opens up the Take a Chance album and it's a great great song and I didn't know it opened it. Oh yeah. yeah. Great. Here we go. And Lindsay Buckingham singing yeah. on, the, on the choruses. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. River on the run. Like a circle around the sun. Roll, 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 roll. Roll me 
People love that one too. Yeah, they do. So when yeah, you hear Pat, that's one of Pat's favorites. Yeah, so. when you hear the lyrics go by, I know as a songwriter, some some are just made up. But do any other, any others like kick in? Oh, that was about so and so. Besides Jerry. Oh, uh, oh yeah. There was like uh, Little David. I don't know if you ever knew Little David. I did. Who's once, the magician? Yeah. The magician you couldn't make disappear. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, they're all somebody. Yeah, I can't think. The cowboy doesn't know a fear. Yeah, the guy I knew from Texas. Okay, uh, Jerry Gibson. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> this is from way, way back when I was a kid. When girl, the streetwalker, I would be just pretty generic there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Jerry's the re rock and roll guy. Yeah, yeah. And then the reference uh, again to Salt Spring Island. Take me to the island that I want to. Yeah, go. It's a f- yeah. As as both of you know, uh, but the listeners to your show may not know is that was a song that has been cannibalized in a in a way to be used in the musical candy bar should that ever see the light of day right yeah. i was going to get i didn't know if you wanted to talk about that or not but i'm glad well, you brought it up we should yeah 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 absolutely the candy bar d- definitely deserves a little i mean the the whole the candy bar the song candy bar the stripper the whole thing and then turning it into a play i mean that and that that's brilliant I and mean, you took i've never seen anybody be that good with lyrics where you would take what were already great lyrics and either come up with new ones or twist them a little bit so that, and the lyrics were always great. I mean, they're just, just as good as the original lyrics and have it fit the, uh, the plot. Now it's all, it's, it's, uh, it's sung by uh, candy bar and it's when she was in women's prison in Texas and it's about the women in prison. So each, each of the names she, they're each pretty much the same, I think, but they each refer to some uh, cellmate or somebody in prison with her. That's one one of the songs that Jerry and I wrote, and there's a, one at least, if not two, songs that Jerry wrote on his own that uh, were also cannibalized for the same show. Uh, yeah, Naomi's song, I think, turned into... Sweet Jack Ruby, right? Is that the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a lady that is the head of the musical theater department at NYU, which is a pretty prestigious department, especially being in New York City. Yeah. And uh, she was crazy for the music, and she's a terrific songwriter. And she had lined up a bunch of her students to do a reading this summer and 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 the songs and everything and then like everything else covid Eek. knocked uh, that out yeah. so hopefully when the world gets back to normal we'll have that reading maybe, maybe you could give a little summary of the play or and start with you know your relationship or with candy bar and the you know i don't mean your relationship but just talk <laughs> about her and then <laughs> <laughs> Um, Kids, plug your ears. No. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> leave the room. No, um, no, I never. I unfortunately never had that relationship. Okay. <laughs> no, you did meet her though. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I did. And of yes. course, when I was a kid, speaking of kids, close your ears. Uh, she was like every young kid's fantasy. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, sexual fantasy. Yeah. Because there was a big billboard of she was a famous. She wasn't a stripper because she never took anything off. I mean, she mainly came on stage and danced uh, in a G-string and two six-shooters and a cowboy hat. And she, uh, there was a big billboard on, uh, as I remember, it was Commerce Street. And it was, it wasn't Jack Ruby's club who had a club there. And she and he were and very, he discovered her, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, but she worked for another guy named uh, Weinstein. There were Weinstein brothers, different than Harvey and mm-hmm. his <laughs> But uh, 
uh, Abe, and Abe had a club. I think it's called Abe's Colony Club, and she was the headliner there for years. And people came from all over the world to see her, and she was a pure hellion. She was the kind of woman that the churches wanted taken out of town. There would be preachers preaching against her. And and uh, she was a toughie. She was actually, she came from the Dust Bowl. I don't want to go to the old story, but and she was uh, a hooker at the age of 13 at a motel in Dallas. Man, oh, and man. a gangster bought her from the motel owner. Uh, the guy that bought her was a safe cracker. He was an explosives guy. And then uh, she, she could always dance. And she just was a tremendous. She was like an improv dancer using bop and whatever was going on in the day. Anyway, long story short, she went with different big time mobsters and gangsters and but like I say, she was discovered by Jack Ruby. She was arrested. In those days, marijuana was two to life if they found any marijuana on you, any mm. marijuana. And so she, there was a big trial, and she got it delayed uh, for a year anyway. And she went to Vegas and met Mickey Cohen. And they were an item when he was public enemy number one. And then he took her to Chicago. He took her to Mexico and uh, she got strung out on heroin. Anyway, she she came back to Texas and they put her in prison. And uh, then she was paroled and pardoned by Governor Connolly, who was in the car with JFK when he was shot. He got yeah. shot, too. Ah. And uh, she was allowed one correspondent in prison and uh, that was jack ruby he'd visit her quite often and uh, she knew she knew all there was to know about uh, the jfk thing and that's pretty much the the story is about actually it turns out to be my character a guy that's trying to find out from her and she's used to that people trying to use her to find out who did what to who and uh, the CIA questioned her and the FBI and the IRS, and she never talked. That was her claim to fame. She never gave up any information. But uh, her quote her, her quote to me, and it's in the show, she said, there were so many shooters in Dealey Plaza that day, they could have sold hunting licenses. Wow. So the implication was there was a bunch of people looking Wow. Uh, so well, well, I got to read the script. Thank you, Stuart. And it's fantastic. Yeah. I loved it. So. I, the, yeah. the play is great. Play, I yeah. sure hope something that comes of it at some point. It's I remember you saying that she was so bad and such bad when she was hanging out with Mickey Cohen at some point Meyer Lansky from the East Coast New York called right. Mickey and said you got to dump this girl, man. She is bad news. Here's he's talking to public enemy number one, telling him to get this girl is trouble. Yeah, right, <laughs> this girl right. is trouble. She's bad news. You shouldn't be seen with her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bad for your reputation. Well, the song was written long before the musical, but it was kind of an homage to her. Right, 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 right. Two, three. But she went to jail She dropped a nail on some snow white up tight to right Dallas honky Oh, little lady only one Get her kick Shot a man down and the next day she was free Take the law and get you to the life on local weed Don't need to just tell you
down She will turn you around She can't make, shake, fake, break, take you till you holler the line Stuart who wrote the is that you or Jerry I do you I remember no I I'm gonna guess Jerry I'm gonna guess Jerry too but yeah lyrics yeah, lyrics sound certainly. like heavy, heavy Stuart that lyric yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yeah anyway yeah well it's definitely a co-write so and Mae West wrote the chorus <laughs> we had this very strange little office on uh La Brea, right, for those of you who know L.A., right before you get to the freeway, there was an old wino hotel there. And on one side was a theater, which is funny, where the play I had written, the one act where I, my friend Smokey mm -hmm. knew Murray. Mm -hmm. And on the other side were all these empty shops. And uh, Jerry and I had one of them. I don't know how many mattresses we put up <laughs> to to keep the sound out, but I mean it was talk about unhealthy, you know. <laughs> uh, these were old, you can imagine, thrown out mattresses thrown away from a wino hotel. <laughs> I remember that place. Yeah, and that's where Candy Bar was written. That's where you wrote that. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that place. We practiced there all the time. <laughs> yeah. This this is on uh, uh, Coinga, right? Wasn't wasn't it Coinga? Oh, it could have been Dave. That's right. It wasn't La Brea. It was yeah. It was Coinga with all the mattresses. Yeah, there wasn't. And we put up all those around. mattresses. And we it was like it was Coinga. You're right. We had a, we had just tons of mattresses. We thought because we were getting complaints about the sound, so we put all the mattresses up there and just thought, okay, now we can. Then we start playing. And somehow, I think the guy next door was a printer or something, and giant, giant poster with purple letters saying, "It's still too loud." <laughs> <laughs> we had that. We kept that poster for a long time. That is funny. I know every bass note, or every time Dave would strum, and and he would have on. Uh, I don't. I forget what kind of speaker you had in those days or amp, but you'd see the dust come out of the. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, yeah. Stuart, did you 
did you and Jerry have a, a certain formula that you would follow or was it kind of no, one way or no. the other? Like someone had some lyric. And st- yeah. Or, or Jerry would have a melody or. Okay. So the, all right. Yeah. If there was, I didn't know it. Right. Okay. Good. Yeah, Perfect. You know. That's the way it uh, should be. Just let it happen. Right? Yeah. And then we had an, oh God, we, we had little joints all over town where we wrote. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, and there was one song that is in Candy Bar that Jerry and I wrote that was written in Dallas, of all things, which was uh, Gulf of Mexico. Mm. Oh, love that song. Uh, yeah. He came to Dallas, and that was uh, purely, the music was purely Jerry's. Right. And yeah. So to me, I even found it strange. And he was messing around with different things and uh, came up with that. That's cool. But you, he got your, he was doing it to your lyrics. Uh, I, I'm, I, I may have written to the melody even. Interesting. Which would have been different for us, and mostly different. That uh, uh, that one's one on top of my list too, and that, some of my favorite lyrics and some of my favorite, uh, some of my favorite music from each one of you guys. Yeah. One of my favorites, I was going to say what the the song I always end up when I want to think about Jerry and and th- do think about Jerry is I play over and over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just, I, I always told him, I said, I always regret that I couldn't get it to George Jones because uh-huh. I always, I knew just how to, you know, yeah. he would sing it, you know? Yeah.
uh, that's, that's I love a, that tune. That's an audience favorite as well. They they cheer and a couple lines that the audience just cheers like mad. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Love that song. Uh, and he wrote that pretty quick. He wrote, yeah, yeah. Everything. That was him attempting to write a country song. That's what he said. This is he. He always said, "I finally wrote a country song." When he went, oh, remember yeah. that? Remember Dave? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is probably the most country of any song Jerry wrote. That Jerry wrote, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, Buying, begging, right. stealing is pretty much. You guys wrote that together, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the first ones we we may have written was Oklahoma Double Show. Hey, you know what? And I was going to play that one, but I forgot to put it in here. I might add, I love that song. Oklahoma <laughs> Devil Shuffle. That was when you were writing for movies, right? And Let's Get Loaded? Uh, yeah, but we never did it on a movie. You didn't? Uh, oh, I thought that well, was... Well, maybe we, maybe it was used somewhere. Maybe you wrote it, then you threw it in for a movie. I, loaded was yeah. certainly written for the movie. Yeah. For, oh, yeah, yeah. For sure, that was. You know what was on... Uh, TC, was it? T- no, no, when it was on some pretty big network when they're all was uh, Evil Roy Slade. Yeah, that was it. That was Loaded uh, was on that one, right? No, no, lo- Loaded was in lo- Loaded was in a Burt Reynolds. Uh, what was that called? Yeah. Uh, 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 Simon's in the Run Simon oh, yeah. Run. Oh, okay. Run I Simon think Run. Yeah. But Evil Roy yeah. Slade, that's so funny. The 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 theme the theme song is yeah. <laughs> Pat Pat said, well, who's that saying? I said, That's us. That's <laughs> yeah. Murray and and that in the first verse and the title was me saying. Yeah. And she just thought that was she couldn't believe it. Well oh, what's funny good. about that that intro of that movie, because I actually bought I have it on VHS, by the way. Um <laughs> Is the narrator was what's his name? Pat Betray. I can't. Th- Pat Bertram. Yeah, it was. A good, yeah, but, it was written by Jerry Belson. Yeah, right. Marshall N. Belson. But the narrator, and, you know, he had that quirky voice. Yeah, and it's funny. Voice that, like that. Yes, and when the song comes in with you singing, it almost sounds like it's him singing oh. the song. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it has that quirky yeah. evil. You know, almost sounds like it's the same. You remember the first line? It was it's still pretty, evil was slayed. Made fun of old people, people. yeah. <laughs> Scared little children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh God. Uh, Funny. We had a lot of fun. Um, uh, Murray, who get pretty crazy sometime in those days, and there he gets so involved, he'd be so wrapped up. And and there was a man that ran Universal Music. Can't think of his name, whatever it was, Harry, somebody. And he rarely visited the sound stages, much less got involved in anything. But uh, we were doing, you know, we had a pretty big orchestra down there doing weird, like a, a musical intro for Dick Sean's write up, which was like a Beach Boy song. So <laughs> no one knew what was going on. And I remember he came down there. And said, "What's going on down here?" Huh? And Murray said, "Get out of here! <laughs> I'll never forget." I thought, "Oh God, I'll never work again." You know? Oh my God! Uh, get out of here, <laughs> Stu- Stuart. Were you friends with Jerry yet in his Phil Spector days, or is that you? A little, you became friends? No, with that was before I before met. Before you him. met him. Okay. I I've got a question for you. So, Ruth Ann Friedman, who wrote Wendy. Oh yeah! Did you guys were going to do a movie of her version before it came out? The association came out with it. Do you recall well, we, anything like well, that? We shot a documentary. I didn't shoot it, but put it together. Uh, Larry Sullivan, who was a guy I went to school with, actually kind of produced it, and we shot a love in at Elysian Park. Easter 67. Mm-hmm. No, no, not 67, 65. Mm-hmm. Wow. And uh, total one of the, you know, loved in. Everybody was loaded. Everybody was dressed up. Some guy parachuted in to the park. <laughs> and that was part of the film. And it was a little documentary that followed this little girl running through the thing. And, and we made the film to Ruth Ann's demo mm-hmm. it was before the association right had even recorded it and then they ended up using it 
And we always like to say it was the first MTV. Uh, it was the first kind of music yeah, right. song to music uh, video yeah. film. Yeah, huh? That's cool. Yeah, I've been I I became I've become friends with Ruth Ann in recent years. Oh, through, that's great through David Jenkins and uh, and so so yeah, she's she's cool. Well, we we were given that song. We Murray and Jerry and Smokey, they they had the kind of, the kind of hit they had on Sunshine Girl. And they were given that song, and they were given one other song by the da 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 da, 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 da happy together. Oh, wow. Turtles. And uh, which is very parade. -like. The, the guys turned it down to, you know, to have their own music. Mm -hmm. But huh. they had two, you know, those two songs were around at the same time, huh. looking for wow. an artist, you know. Is interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. That's a good story. I never knew that. Yeah. That's cool. Well, what do you say, guys? That well, was fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Enjoyed it. There's Next so much to I'm talk about. Wine. I mean, there's so many, so many songs you guys wrote together. <laughs> there's we could go on all day. Yeah. Talking well, about. all the little films that we got them into too. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Films. God, I'm weird. Yeah. Anyway, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Good to talk to you. Anything guys. you want to talk about that you're up to besides the candy bar story? You, any? No, I'm like everybody else. I'm sitting in my house, okay, listening to old music and some new music, uh, waiting to get out. Okay. <laughs> well, well. Anyway, I wanna I wanna just end with one more song, Stuart. That sure. You, you and Jerry wrote together. It was on the Take a Chance album, and uh, let's just play oh. this one out, and then we'll come back, and then we'll we'll call it call it a day you, you got it okay here we go hey old friend uh. hey old friend come sit for a spell tell you what we'll do you can cry and I won't tell what we've all been through Everybody calls me, nobody knows my real name Thank you ma'am, I'm just digging clams Preacher tells me maybe he's the only one to save us But he's got nine acres in Las Vegas Whoa, sell back, cause we ain't got time Friend, you're not alone I know the street can make your mind Be a long time gone Oh, everybody calls me Nobody knows my real name Thank you, ma'am, just a digging class You ain't seen nothing yet, that's what everybody's saying Oh, I believe it, but I'm still praying still be there No one's lost and can be found By someone somewhere By someone somewhere I will still be there Hey old friend come and sit for a spell Tell you what we'll do You can cry and I won't tell What we're moment 
I like that song. Yeah. Yeah, that's a perfect song. <laughs> that's also in Candy Bar. Yeah. It's uh, she and Jack Ruby. He sings it to her in her prison cell, and she sings it to him in his jail cell. Hmm. A reprise kind of thing. Wow. Pretty simple, but it feels good. Yeah. 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 Some great lines, too. Really good D- lines. Dave and I attempted that at the tribute show. We did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I missed that one. I just yeah. couldn't come on. Yeah, that. I know. We'll go. I want to do, I want, I, I'm, well, like, nothing yet, but <laughs> I want to try to make it an annual thing. So maybe one of oh. these, one of these times you can come out. It'll be one for yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I would enjoy that. Yeah. And I've enjoyed talking to you, Paul and Dave Thank always. You. Thank you, you Stuart, too. for, uh, for visiting yeah. the Riopelle room. Yeah, and, good to be here. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Talk to you soon.